All right, so boom. I had to show Mac Miller some love because both songs that I know by him are nice. And yes, I said both songs, meaning only two. The only songs I know by Mac Miller are Party on Fifth Ave, and I know that song because it used to play during commercials on Teen Nick way back in the day. And the other song I know by him is called Whatever. And I only know Whatever because he used the first verse of that song for his SXL cipher. Other than that, it's up to y'all to put me hip to Mac. One thing I thought about doing is, if I'm doing this series on a deceased artist, I should call it Was I Sleeping instead of Am I Sleeping? Because saying am I sleeping is implying that that person is still making music, you know what I mean? If I say was I sleeping, then the question sounds more correct. Like was I sleeping on them but not listening to them back when they was alive? But then I went nah, 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 nah. I done already made a video on two deceased artists, so it's too late now. There's probably some smaller YouTuber out there that's going to take this idea as soon as they heard me say that. I already found one person that did it. But it's all good. Like, he shouted me out and said that he was inspired by this series, so <laughs> I didn't take it the wrong way. Speaking of shoutouts, don't forget to listen to Last Time by Vega Two Times to get hip to his music. Y'all show Vega two times some love on his Instagram, Twitter, and his YouTube channel if you rock with the song. And as a reminder, if a song is not in this video, that means I either already know the song, which is very likely not the case because I just said I only know two tracks, or I just simply didn't choose it because I can't even listen to every dang song y'all give me. I want to get started with the Mac Miller slander right away. So first, let me start by saying one song I almost picked for this video, but I changed my mind because I just really didn't like it was Diablo. So yeah, if you're a fan of the song Diablo, too bad, it won't be in here. But let's start with the first song I picked as my personal choice, which is One Last Thing. I chose this song simply because it was on his first album. Party on Fifth Ave was on his first album as well. So I wanted to check out another track from there. So I saw this was the final track and went like, okay, bet, let's do this one. His first album debuted at number one on Billboard, by the way, and he released it independently. That alone shows how amazing of a fan base this man had. Any rapper would cry if that happened. To release your first album independently and you're topping the charts, like, wow. Speaking of Billboard, on their YouTube channel, I don't know if y'all remember this, but they used to have artists do track-by-track -track breakdowns of their album, and the artist would speak for a few seconds about what each song on the album means. J. Cole did this for the sideline story, Big Sean did it for Hall of Fame, and Mac did it for Blue Slide Park. He described One Last Thing as being, One Last Thing is the wrap up. It's me making sure that people understand that I've wrapped my ass off. That's really the purpose of that song. At the end of it all, the album, the crazy journey you go through with music, at the end of the day, I can wrap my ass off, period. The first thing I gotta point out is, I will admit that the mixing isn't that great, and the production is much louder than his voice on most of the song. There's only one verse here, and in the middle of the verse, you can dead ass hear the background instrumentals more than you can hear him. Now, let me say this. There is one line that I'm about to point out. I can already tell that listening to this man's music, now that he's passed away, it really hurts. As soon as this song started, he said something where I instantly had to pause the song and go, Damn. And that's all I could say because it was a lot to take in hearing him say this, knowing that he's no longer with us. Everybody wanna ask where I came from. Young kid who banged drums. Money, don't you worry, I'ma make some. Somebody changing the world, it only takes one. Never scared of death, but I ain't ready for that day to come. That last line, I'm never scared of death, but I ain't ready for that day to come. That instantly made me realize, even though Mac had an addiction to the things he was using, a part of me feels like he didn't really care about the consequences of using them. Like, Y'all don't realize like that the people in this world that aren't afraid of dying are the most reckless people and they just want to have a good time by any means. So hearing him say way back in 2011 that he wasn't afraid of dying is already a hard hitting lyric. Overall, this song is him talking about him grinding and working on his craft. And although he didn't know that he would grow to have the popularity that he had, he did know that he had a gift and that people was always sleeping on his skills. Muhammad Ali, yeah, I'm him in his prime. Just that normal kid in class you were sitting behind. Didn't really pay attention to him spinning his rhymes. But now you see his car and try getting inside. See, like he knew that people would sleep on him when he first started out and rap. 
Hey man, like, other than the mixing, this track is so good. Forewarning, this is the only song from this album that's in this video. And crazy enough, I found a Billboard article that talked about Max saying one of the reasons he started heavily using was because of the mixed slash negative reaction he got from this project. So I'm afraid these songs are only going to get darker from here. But let's see. The next song recommended by Reezy Turner on YouTube is called The Question featuring Lil Wayne. Oh man, I can already tell I'm in for an emotional roller coaster listening to this man's music. Y'all remember just now where I pointed out the line, never scared of death, but I ain't ready for that day to come. And I said how that line is very ominous knowing that he passed. That's how you can describe this entire fucking song. <laughs> the entire song of questions is just, geez, this is hurtful to listen to. The song itself is Mac asking questions about his purpose in life. You know, when people are upset about things, they tend to ask themselves, why am I even here? What is my purpose in this thing called life? What am I supposed to do with my life? All of those examples of questions that I just gave are exactly the type of questions that Mac asks about. And of course, since it's a song, his singing is really good when he says such things. Sometimes I wonder who the fuck I am. I'm asking what am I supposed to do? Because of all these rampant questions that he has about the purpose of his existence, he gets stressed out just thinking about it. And as you all know, he chooses to smoke and drink lean so he can feel better. And he actually says that's more entertaining for him to do. Now, the most entertaining thing about this song is that he sings every other line. In both verses, he raps a line normally and then he sings the next one in a more harmonic voice and he alternates like that throughout the whole song. I hope this feeling lasts for fucking ever. I don't want to come back down, let me stay above the ground, I hope I do what I was meant to do. Cause I've been searching for that answer, I just hope I get it now. That's how the whole song is and the beautiful part about it, all of the lines that he sings, you could legit take those out the verse and put them together and that could be a whole song in itself it could make for like its own poem if it wanted to i'll give y'all some of the singing lines in the first verse alone and tell me this couldn't be a song by itself sometimes i wonder who the fuck i am i'm asking what am i supposed to do i done flew around the whole world but i'm a hostage in my own world see what i mean like that's a song right there <laughs> now when it got to wayne's verse I instantly knew that this was made around the Dakota 4 era because of Wayne's punchlines. As someone who's listened to a lot of Wayne's early catalog, he became super pretentious with his punchlines starting in the 2010s decade. So as soon as I heard him say, I'm lighting up a stogie, it's longer than a hoagie, situation's getting fishy and I don't eat anchovies. I was like, yep, that, that's 2010s Wayne, all right. But Wayne's verse stretches this song out to me. He, he was an unneeded feature. His verse wasn't bad, it was just okay, but I don't want to hear an okay verse after hearing two fire verses from Mac, you know? It was great hearing Mac sing about him asking what his purpose in life is, and then Wayne comes along talking about Everybody gotta die, but I ain't everybody. If that hoe play with me, I whoop that chick like Terrence Howard. So yeah, Wayne can get on somewhere. We two dubs in though, and I know I should enjoy the rest of these, so let's see. Recommended on Instagram from at Joseph Sortino 24 is the song Kool-Aid and Frozen Pizza. So why the fuck you bugging? <laughs> yeah. Quick thing to say to y'all, when I'm listening to the songs of this series, if a song has a music video, I typically watch the video while I'm listening to the song for the first time. And when it came to Kool-Aid and Frozen Pizza, I will say that this is the first time where I understood where the Mac Miller makes frat boy or skater boy music thing comes from. Listening to this and watching this video, like seeing how Mac is dressed and whatnot, like that's what made me go like, okay, like I see where people are getting this from. Either way, man, frat boy, skater boy or not, like this song is nice as hell. That's thanks to Lord Finesse too. Like this song samples his song Hip to the Game, and Mac 100% did this beat justice with how smooth he raps over it. Can a rapper outplay me? Do you think, kid? I live a life pretty similar to yours. Lord Finesse ended up suing Mac for using the sample though, so I'ma have to call him Ho Finesse instead. He probably gonna sue me for calling him a hoe, talking about I'm bullying him. But this song is just about like being a kid and having a good time doing whatever you want. 
these are the type of tracks I describe as a young, wild, and free track. Just a song to play during the summer where you can hang out with your friends, meet new people, and do new things. Mac himself just talks about how even during those times of chilling and hanging out with his homies, he wanted something bigger and he always had dreams of being someone bigger. I live a life pretty similar to yours. Used to go to school, hang with friends and play sports. Every single summer taking trips to the shore. And that was all gravy, but I knew I wanted more. It's cool how relatable these lines are too. As soon as you hear him say, yeah, I live a life pretty similar to yours, and then you hear the rest, you instantly relate to what he's saying. Well, not if you're a lonely ass person who didn't have friends, but that's another story. Mac also touches on that even if you may not enjoy his music, you gotta admit that he still got some buzz around his name cause he's on fire with the music he's already putting out. And he's just waiting for that moment where the rap game accepts him even more and he blows up to a bigger audience. Everybody got their own opinion, the reasons why they feeling them, you must admit he's killing them, running off adrenaline, waiting for the game to want to let them in so open up, the bullet barrel of a smoking gun. Kool-Aid and Frozen Pizza was nice as hell. <laughs> I feel like had this song or Mac Miller himself came out in the 90s or early 2000s, this song would have been perfect on a Tony Hawk skateboarding video game. Because that's one of the things I think about when hearing this track. Those Tony Hawk video game soundtracks hit hella different. If you played those earlier games, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Y'all doing good with the recommendations, bro. Let's move on to track number four. Recommended on Twitter from Isaiah the Player is the song Hurt Feelings. Um, speaking of hurt feelings, and my feelings were hurt after listening to this. This track is kind of boring to me, man. Th this one wasn't it to me. Now I know some of you are already hearing me say that and are going, Shame on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shame on you. But I seriously yawn every time I listen to this song. Hurt Feelings just shows Mac metaphorically speaking about his life and how things have been going for him, notably about how he's aware that he's become a different person the more famous he got. But even with all of the new problems and issues that come with the more money and fame he's getting, he's learning about the world and he's just trying to stay level-headed. I keep my head above the water, my eyes getting bigger so the world is getting smaller. I be getting richer but that only made me crazy, mama told me I was different even when I was a baby. On top of that, he says how he's always going to be loyal and honest to the true people that held him down and even though his life is getting crazier and he's usually upset about it, he's still enjoying the fruits of his labor and is still fascinated by the women, parties and such. I'm bringing everyone with me when shit get iffy. I give 150%. This is the shit that I'm dealing with, but I wish I forget. Used to be feeling depressed. Now that I'm living, I'm a little obsessed. Thanks to this song, though, I did find a documentary that he did with The Fader called Stop Making Excuses, where he discussed his drug use and what he wants to do with his life. It was a great thing to watch. It's only 12 minutes. I think all of y'all should check it out. This video only just begun, and I don't want to hurt y'all feelings, but I'm not about to lie about my enjoyment of a song. But we all good. We're moving on to the next track. And this one actually has the word feeling in it as well. Recommended on Twitter by at Samaj Savage is Fight the Feeling featuring Kendrick Lamar. Hey yo, when I typed in Mac Miller Fight the Feeling on YouTube, one of the suggestions that came up said Fight the Feeling without the ending. So I was like, huh, what do they mean without the ending? I ignored it and I went to like the regular song, but before listening to the regular song, I sat there for like 10 seconds and I went, like, hold on, let me let me go back to that. Like what ending is there? So once I clicked on, you know, fight the feeling with no ending, I saw a video that was 30 seconds shorter than the original and it had no moaning in parentheses. So I knew I was in for some bullshit when I went back to the original one. I'll talk about what was at the end in a second, but let me say something really important. Actually. I gotta turn off the background music for this one because I'm about to say something serious. I'm not saying this to hate, I'm not saying this so y'all can respond like, bro, this nigga can never be pleased. But I seriously do not see why so many people think this is a fantastic song. I listen to Fight the Feeling over and over and over again, and I'm not hearing at all why this is being praised as a masterpiece. Now the reason I pause the background music is because I'm going to be truthful and honest here. Like I be telling y'all I'm an honest person. I think the reason why I don't see this song as that great, it may be because I don't understand the song. This isn't like the song Purity by ASAP Rocky and Frank Ocean. You know, I had that song in my Rocky video and I completely understood that meaning. I just didn't think it was entertaining to listen to. 
with fight the feeling, I'm going to give myself the benefit of the doubt and say, I maybe just don't understand what they're trying to say here. For that reason, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not even going to attempt to break this song down to you. How I am in my Am I Sleeping series, I don't just say, oh, this song is fire or, oh, this song is trash and then I move on. I like to give these videos more of an educational style to them as well. So for you guys who never heard these songs, once I break down the meaning and highlight some of the bars and talk about the vibe that I felt from the track, y'all may think like, hold on, that song actually sounds fire. Like, I'm, I'm gonna go check that out on my own after this video. Because if I put you on to a track while talking about it in one of my videos, then that's amazing. So with that being said, I strongly believe that I would not be doing this song justice if I tried to explain this to you all because I don't even know what the hell they're talking about. I understood some of Max verses. Like, of course, this is not me saying that I'm just completely lost on what they're rapping about. I caught a decent amount of what Mac was trying to say. It was mostly Kendrick's verse entirely that flew over my head. I don't know what the fuck his verse was supposed to mean. No matter how many times I played it, I kept rewinding Kendrick's verse and thinking, like, bro, what is this man talking about? If any of you understand Kendrick's verse in Fight the Feeling, or if you understand the song entirely, please let me know in the comments. Break it down for me, and I'll be sure to read it. So, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from, because I would be a lie and a half if I said, oh, I completely understood this song, and I just don't think it's all that. Y'all overrating the hell out of this, because that's not the case. I don't know what this song is about, so I didn't even want to try to explain it and end up sounding like a dumbass. So, I would prefer to just go on to the next song. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all wasn't getting away from hearing this. This is the end of the song that so many people despise and think is unnecessary. And yes, this goes on for almost 30 seconds. All of that moaning was just a segue into the next track called Lucky Ass Bitch with Juicy J, which is a song about the lavish life of a celebrity, sex, bras, etc. I seriously do not know why Mac thought it was a good idea to put a bitch moaning at the end of this song. It really could have been taken out, but who knows, I don't even have an interest in listening to Lucky Ass Bitch because of this. The next song is a recommendation from YouTube. Recommended by Calvin B, we have the song Lucky Ass Bitch Feet Signal. We have the song 2009. Now, someone being new to this track, seeing the title, you would think that the song was either released in 2009 or the song was about the year 2009. And it's essentially the latter. This song has Mac talking about the lessons he learned throughout his music career, and the reason he highlights the year 2009 is because this is the year before he released his mixtape, Kids. You Mac Miller fans already know, he released like four projects before this one from 2007 to 2009. But this is the project right here where many people started to get hip to the kid from Pittsburgh and started checking him out. One of the lines Mac says during the chorus that's very important is him singing, It ain't 2009 no more. Yeah, I know what's behind that though. This is important because he's telling himself that he isn't scared about what's going to happen to him as his music career goes on. He's been in the game for so long that he's already experienced the ups and downs that comes with fame. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Whereas in 2009, before he dropped the kids mixtape and before he blew up, he had absolutely no idea what was in store for him. So this song is like a 10 year veteran looking back at his life before he got started and saying, I came a long way and I know what to expect now. Although he's been rapping and has been famous for years, he does state that he doesn't have all of the tools to make it through. Now every day I wake up and breathe. I don't have it all, but that's all right with me. Take it nice and easy. And unfortunately, as we all knew, part of the reason why he didn't have it all together was because of his drug habit. And he even mentions that he had moments where he wished he wasn't in the position he was in and that he had a simpler life. I wish I took a simpler route instead of having demons that's as big as my house. He doubles down on this in the second verse where he says, a life ain't a life till you live it. I was digging me a hole big enough to bury my soul. So, yes, this is definitely another one of those songs that's sad to listen to now that Mac is gone. Because he even put in his music how unhappy he was despite the fame, money, and fans that he had. And in this track particularly, he looks at the beginning of his career and recognizes how much he's been through since then. We back on track with the dove now though because I didn't know how this was going to go after I didn't like hurt feeling and fight the feeling. But next up, we have the final recommendation from Twitter. From at Ava underscore Veil is the song Brand Name.
Okay, bet. We on another good road now. 2009 and brand name definitely helped me get over not liking those other two tracks. So Mac himself described brand name as a song about finding my place in the world of brands and names. It's like creating my own niche rather than trying to be a part of something else. And he metaphorically speaks about us as a society. As in, you tend to put more value into something when a specific name or company is attached to it. So for that reason, Mac wants to create his own lifestyle and be his own man rather than fitting the mold of something that people are already familiar with. He doesn't want to be looked at as the next this person or the next that person. I'm going to be the first and only Mac Miller. This is a point I have to reiterate right here because when you listen to Mac Miller, it's something that's going to constantly come up. This man dying at a young age makes a lot of his lyrics very spooky to hear. There are many lines that after you hear them, you just have to pause the song and say, like, fuck, man. For brand name, the line that definitely gave me that reaction was easily towards the end of his first verse where he said, To everyone who sells me drugs, don't mix it with that bullshit. I'm hoping not to join the 27 Club. For anyone who doesn't know what the 27 Club is, I do recommend you like look into it on Wikipedia or so. It is darkly interesting. But really, it's the name that's given to famous musicians who all conveniently died when they were 27 years old, like Kurt Cobain or Amy Winehouse. When you're a musician, there's something about being 27 years old where you have to be on the lookout because it's happened too many times. But yeah, that's what Mac is saying. He's hoping that he doesn't end up losing his life at a young age because someone sold him some drugs that was laced with something deadly. So knowing that that's exactly how he died when he was four months away, from turning 27 years old is mind boggling. The song is mostly him touching on wanting to make it in life, how hard he's working to get to say a better lifestyle, and showing his love to his hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. For some reason in this song, the hardest lines come at the end of the verse on both verses. When it comes to the showing love to Pittsburgh part, he ends his verse with a double entendre of how people try to say he's turning his back on the city cause he moved to Los Angeles and he's been gone for years. And he connects that to the things people say about him being a white rapper. LeBron left home, but he came back. This is what raised me, made me rap, PA's baby. I ain't been a PA lately. See, I left and they call me shady. I'm a white rapper, they always call me shady. That was hard, because a lot of rappers will tell you this. People back in their hometown try to act like you turned your back on them or something, or that you're shady towards them just because you moved out the city. So in Max's case, this wordplay works perfectly, because if you're a white rapper, it's inevitable that you're going to get compared to Eminem. So he just brushes it off and goes, eh. I'm a white rapper, man. They're going to call me shady regardless of what I do. This this song was hard. Now, these final three songs is about to be... <sighs> I'm in for a long ride because these final three songs are all tracks that everybody mentioned. And these were all being praised as top 10 or top 5 Mac Miller tracks. This next song is 8 minutes long, but that's because it's two tracks put into one. I'm excited for it, though. I want to hear some greatness. Recommended on YouTube by SE4J is Perfect Circle slash Godspeed. Everybody's saying I need rehab, so I'm speeding with a blindfold on, it won't be long until they watching me crash. I'm so glad that I didn't turn this song away due to its length, because this is the toughest song I had to listen to so far. And not tough in a bad way, like on some fight the feeling stuff, where I just didn't know what he was talking about. It was tough because these lyrics were so sad to hear, like probably the saddest lyrics from every song in this video. So the first part of this song, Perfect Circle, is Mac admitting to us and himself that he hasn't been the strongest when it comes to kicking his addiction. While he has, of course, been working on it, he still has his moments where, when he's overwhelmed emotionally, he chooses to indulge in his demons instead of finding another way to make himself feel better. The reason why I say admitting is because he also states that people love to lie and make it seem like some problems that they have in their life is out of their control and that they can't do anything about it. But in this case, he's telling the audience, like, I have different ways that I can cope with my unhappiness, but instead of choosing those alternate routes, I choose to continue drinking and popping pills. Can you draw a perfect circle? A lot of lies cover the truth. You got options. What do you do? I wash these pills down with liquor and fall. Leave it to me. I do enough for us all. Now, some people may look at these lyrics and this first song perfect entirely and feel no sympathy for Mac at all. And will say things like, hey man, if you were aware of the damage alcohol and pills were doing to you, but you chose to keep indulging in them, then whatever happens to you is your fault, man. You knew what you was doing. And that's why he simply responds with, nobody is perfect. It's very easy to look at someone else's life and criticize them for the decisions they make, but you know good well there are decisions you make in your life that you're not proud of. 
in the second verse he touches on his unhappiness some more by saying how even when it's his birthday he's not fully happy and he even lashes out on people who say things to him like oh i thought you were sober because he doesn't want to be reminded of his habits so everything that i just said so far was only the first part perfect circle this record really starts to get to you during the second song, Godspeed. One of the first things that got me was that Mac played a real life voicemail that he got from his brother Miller during a time where it was the holiday season and nobody in his family had heard from Mac, so they were worried. His brother's voicemail was simply, yeah man, I wish you were here. Happy holidays. Um, I love you. And I hope you have a good night slash weekend slash I hope I talk to you soon. Any person listening to that part that has lost a brother, that part will probably make you cry for sure. Now on Godspeed, he full on admits to all of his problems, saying that he's been trying to hold it in, like what truly makes him mad. He tells all of his friends and family that he loves them, and he scarily enough says that he needs to stop his drug use now because he knows he's gonna die soon if he doesn't. Everybody's saying I need rehab, cause I'm speeding with a blindfold on, it won't be long until they watching me crash. And they don't wanna see that. They don't want me to OD and have to talk to my mother, tell her they could have done more to help me and she just be crying, saying that she do anything to have me back. But white lines be numbing them dark times. The pills that I'm popping, I need to man up. Admit it's a problem, I need to wake up. Before one morning, I don't wake up. This song is incredible. I had to stiffen my face up when I was listening to this one because I very easily could have cried hearing the things he was saying on here. It's sad enough that dude had all these problems. It's even more sad that he was fully aware of it and he just couldn't stop. And from an audience standpoint, the fact that he put all of those pains into his music, you can't help but to recognize how amazing of an experience listening to his songs puts you in. We gotta go on to the next two tracks because as I mentioned, I feel like all three of these final songs are gonna make me feel the way Perfect Circle Guy Speed got me feeling. The final two recommendations are both from Instagram, with the first one being from at the Nerdy Kid 2001 with the song Good News. Now, I will say this about good news. This entire time that I've been saying I was expecting to have the same reaction to these last three songs, I was expecting them to be so lyrically powerful that I may even tear up from listening to them. I didn't have that reaction listening to good news. Like, every time I listened to good news, I just kind of sat there until the song got done playing. But don't overreact, because I know how y'all are. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the song. It was still nice. Good news is a song with Mac expressing that the people around him only want to hear like, the good news about his life. They only hear him out and talk to him when he's happy and energetic. On the opposite end, those same people when he's feeling down and when he's not in his highest spirits, that's when they get uncomfortable and they aren't as inviting on spending time with him. The chorus of the song is, good news, good news, good news, that's all they want to hear. No, they don't like it when I'm down. But when I'm flying, oh, it make them so uncomfortable, so different, what's the difference? So here he uses high in two different ways. He's saying that when I'm high in a good way, like when I'm high on energy and I'm in a good mood, that's when y'all love me. But when I'm high in terms of the drugs, like when I'm flying high off the effect of these pills, that's when y'all feel uncomfortable. So in his mind, he doesn't see it being that big of a difference. The best thing about good news is that there are certain pairs of lines or individual lines that by themselves are so powerful for people who just feel alone, feel like they have no one to talk to, or hell, like Max said in the chorus, people who feel that folks only want to be around them when they're doing good, but when you're down, there's no one there to help you. Lines like, why can't it just be easy? Why does everybody need me to stay? Can I get a break? I wish I could just get out my own goddamn way. So tired of being so tired. But one collection of lyrics he had in the second verse that was probably my favorite thing in this entire song was, I'm no liar, but sometimes the truth don't sound like the truth. Maybe because it ain't. I just love the way it sounds when I say it. One thing I always preach in life is that the absolute worst thing a person can do is lie about their feelings to make themselves feel better. This is something that people do all the time. People love to create facades in their mind as a defense mechanism for their emotions. So it can be something that's really bothering them and they will swear up and down that it doesn't. I know that every person watching this video has met someone or currently knows someone that does that. People who say, man, no, I don't care about that. Like, I'm over it. That doesn't bother me. But they love bringing it up and they always thinking about it and always got something to say about it. It's like, 
bro like you can admit that it's bothering you it's okay in max case when it comes to his emotions and his rehab and telling people that he's doing all right he doesn't fully believe in himself and he's just saying that he's all right because other people want to hear that he's okay i don't think i'm telling the truth but i would much rather say that i'm okay to avoid thinking about my demons for any longer so this song is still heavily packed with meaningful words. The song is still great. Just because I'm telling you all that I didn't bawl my eyes out listening to it, that doesn't mean that I don't think it's a great song. With that said, let's see if this final track is going to end this video on a high note. From at ASAP underscore MWT on Instagram, the final song is Self Care. This song is actually a two-parter song, but it's not titled that way, like Perfect Circle Gatsby was. About three and a half minutes in, the song changes to another part called Oblivion with a different sound. And Oblivion plays for the last two and a half minutes, and both parts are fire. Self-care is Mac expressing that he's been seeing all of the signs that he isn't in the best possible state of mind or health that he could be in. So in order for him to get a more positive outlook on life, he's going to do a better job taking care of himself. Change always starts within the person. You know, nobody can help you if you don't want to change or you don't work hard enough to change. And for Mac, he knows how self-destructive he is to the point where one of the hardest lines hearing him say in this song is, somebody save me from myself. What really helps with your experience with this song is if you watch the music video. It takes place with Mac Berry in a pine box and instead of freaking out, screaming, and crying while he's buried, he casually lights a cigarette and carves Memento Mori into the box. Memento Mori roughly translates to, remember you will die. So instead of being super frantic, like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna die soon if I don't change, he accepts that death is inevitable and that change isn't going to happen overnight anyway. He's going to take things one day at a time. This already reminds me of that lyric I highlighted in the first song, One Last Thing. He said, never afraid of death, but I ain't ready for that day to come. It genuinely feels like Mac wasn't afraid of dying. And I don't want this to be an unpopular opinion, but I feel like if he was afraid of dying, he would have cleaned up his act sooner or he wouldn't have been as addicted to using. But because death is not something he was terrified about, his journey to recovery was slower than what it could have been. The second part, Oblivion, has Max singing so beautifully on here. Oblivion just has him singing about his mind just free roaming and saying that it's a beautiful feeling when you don't have to go through life worrying about anything. When you can just suspend your thoughts and have your mind clear of all problems, those can be the moments where you're the most happy. Continuing from the music video, he actually punches himself out of the pine box and rises up from the dirt. Which for me, the way I interpreted it was that he was no longer going to be confined to his own dark thoughts and he's going to start fighting back his demons. He was already calm towards his demons while he was in the box as I previously mentioned, but him actually fighting and successfully getting out of it and him standing through all of the fire and destruction that happened afterwards, I took that as personifying his victory of finally being able to think freely instead of being in his head and thinking dark thoughts all the time. With these final three tracks, I will actually say that Good News was my least favorite out of the three. Although it's still nice, I think Perfect Circle slash Godspeed and Self Care clears. So the question of, am I sleeping on Mac Miller? I will say yes, I was sleeping on him. Now, the reason I don't have a super enthusiastic tone when I'm saying yes is because listening to Mac Miller is way too depressing of an experience now that he's passed away. This is a feeling I did not have whatsoever when I made the Am I Sleeping videos on Juice World or X. When it comes to Mac though, you guys remember how I said numerous times that some of his lyrics and his songs overall can be really tough to listen to knowing how unfortunate his life ended? That's actually the big problem. Mac Miller, in my opinion, just already based on the songs I've heard, doesn't have a lot of replay value. If you want to replay his music, you gotta go to the Boo Slide Park days or the Kids mixtape days. His songs where he's energetic and having fun, those can easily stay in rotation. But the depressing songs like Self Care, Good News, Perfect Circle, Godspeed, it's very rare that you will be in the mood to listen to these songs all the time. While working on this video, all of the tweets and YouTube comments I've seen on a lot of his songs are the same type of comments. This song helps me whenever I'm in a bad mood. I always go back to that song whenever I'm feeling down. Whenever I get upset, I go straight to this song to help me feel better. Like. If the main time you listen to Max music is when you're depressed, doesn't that kind of restrict your listening experience with him? 
you only throw on his music when you're in a messed up position mentally that's kind of crazy but his music is so beautiful to where it gets the job done though knowing what happened to him it can definitely steer you in the right direction on sobering up if you have substance abuse issues and it can help you see that there's a light that can help you out of the darkness that you're in the final thing that i'm gonna say and i'm not saying this as shade towards mac at all but i can already see that although his music is great his best songs are songs that you will hardly ever be in the mood to put them on unless you have a pretty sad life and you just be upset all the time if you do want to listen to his sad songs casually you have to kind of ignore that he's no longer with us and just listen to them for the sound seeing the drastic change in sound that his music had as the years went on from the frat skater boy happy kid to the emotionally depressed always singing about his demons mac miller is it's very tough to look at but regardless of which era of his music you're listening to you're gonna come across some great songs r.i.p mac miller Outro, outro, if it, if it.